Uh, the meeting of the Planning Board is now open, September 5th, 2019. We will have a roll call. Beth Andre? Here. Mario Luciano? Here. Charles Monas? Here. Cynthia Swig? Here. There is a quorum. And pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Item number one on the agenda. It's a repetitive petition. The owner applicant contractors landing for location 100 Evelyn's Way, Griffin Street, Nash Street. Assessor's Lot G-27-1. May I open up? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, Bill Roth, uh, Planning Director of City of Fall River. Uh, before you, uh, this is the second repetitive petition on this uh, project. I just wanted to clarify for the board and for the audience that the scope of what the board is looking at is very narrow. It is not the merits of the design, the layout, or anything. It is strictly the question is, is the proposal, this revised proposal that the applicant is submitting materially and significantly different from what was denied at the Zoning Board of Appeals? At the Board of Appeals, there was a five unit duplex 10 units into five duplex buildings that had excess access off of Evelyn's Way. You have a copy of what was denied by the Board of Appeals. Uh, at the last uh, repetitive petition, they proposed essentially five single family units on one lot, which will ultimately be a condo. It will not be a subdivision because they're not dividing it. It will be a essentially a five single-family dwelling unit condo with five dwelling units on one lot accessing off of Evelyn's Way. What is before you tonight, and Mr. Uh, Dan Aguiar can say, uh, explain it, um, they've taken the comments from uh, what was denied and um, they're looking at making a proposal uh, off of Griffin Street. So before you tonight is, uh, and the presentation and then you can take public comment is, the narrow scope of tonight's meeting is, is what's being proposed tonight materially and significantly different than what was denied by the Board of Appeals? Not the merits of the design or access, you know, it's, is it materially and significantly different? So with that, I can give it to Mr. Aguiar. Good evening. For the record, my name is Dan Aguiar. I'm a senior project manager at SciTech Engineering with addresses here in the city. Dartmouth and Marshfield. As the planner stated, this is a repetitive petition for this real estate that is located at the terminus of the westerly end of Griffin Street and the southerly end of Evelyn's Way. And as the planner had stated, um, the purpose of this repetitive petition is to allow us to go back to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And as he stated, this is not a permit that this board is granting. This is strictly just to make a determination is what we are proposing significantly different than what was denied. Not what was denied at the last planning board meeting, what was denied back at the Zoning Board of Appeals. And as the planner stated um, previously, under a different owner, a different applicant, different engineer, the application was to construct five two unit buildings for 10 total units with vehicular access coming off of the dead end of Evelyn's Way. Uh, in the written decision, um, the reasons for denial were fairly vague and we had some discussion regarding that at our last meeting. Um, but what we did do was we took some of the comments that we had received from the abutters during that discussion and from, from you and I've gone back, spoken with the owners, and we've come together with this new petition, which we think is even more substantially different than the last one. So with regards to what we're actually constructing for units, it would be um, just about identical, shifted around a little bit. So we would still be building one, two, three, four, five basic single-family units, 
but it's considered a multifamily development because it's multifamilies on one parcel of land. So that will allow us to go back to the Zoning Board of Appeals under a special permit. The previous application um, that, that, that you saw had access coming in off of Evelyn's Way. This new petition is coming in off of Griffin Street. So instead of multifamily two unit buildings totaling 10, we have a reduction down to five units. So we feel that five single family dwellings is drastically different than five two unit buildings for 10 total families. So in, in our eyes and our proposal to you is that substantial for one of the reasons that the project was previously denied at the Zoning Board of Appeals. The last meeting it was discussed that some of the neighbors felt that their biggest concern back at the Zoning Board of Appeals wasn't even so much what gets built here, just that it did not access Evelyn's Way. And I think you all remember those, that discussion that we had. So second to the previous discussion, coming in off of Griffin Street now, we will extend Griffin Street with a driveway onto our parcel off street parking for each of the dwellings. That's the petition that's before you today. So you need to make the determination whether or not you feel five single family homes with access from Griffin Street is substantially different than 10 units being five two unit buildings with access off Evelyn's Way. That's also, that's, that's the narrow scope of what we should be looking at. If you have any specific questions or if anyone in the audience does, I'd be more than happy to answer. Any questions from the board? I personally um, see the previous, and I see this one, and it is substantial of the previous request that the one in the front of the zoning. So I, um, the conservation, I see that that's the, that won't have anything to do with us. Uh, no, just there are case. other permits that All we right. need to get, like going back to the Zoning Board of Appeals, going through site plan review, and receiving an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. Those are permits yet to be filed and yet to be obtained. Um, depending upon what type of development uh, that we but do. But the substantial change that I can see there and also previous, I am well satisfied. I can speak for my co colleague. Thank you. Um, yes, it does appear to be substantially different, but I'm interested to know if there's anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this uh, issue. Yes, Charlie, I'm sorry. Okay. Griffin Street, right? Yes. Okay, I can see that that's a change. But what's the road still going from Evelyn's Way to Griffin Street? I am assuming that the fire department is going to want an emergency access, and I believe we have a potential gated access for fire apparatus in the case that they want it. Is that listening? Okay. Yeah, you'll see it. So right here. <coughs> this so this is all going to remain grass this is potential access for an emergency if required so I was assuming through site plan review only because of similar projects they've asked for emergency access so if the fire department asks for it at that point we would still have the ability to do it and it could be a gated situation to ensure that no one uh, use it as, as a normal uh, vehicular travel way and it will also enhance the safety of the subdivision in case they need someone to come in. The fire department has the ability to come over our driveway, which is private, or down Griffin, down our driveway and onto Evelyn's if for some reason they needed to come in that way. So it will serve both developments to have that access in there. Strictly for emergency purposes and again it would be gated. It would be right here. Yep. And that's, and that's only if the fire department requests that through right. site plan. I, I didn't want to not show it, then have them ask for it, and then I had to come back here again. So I wanted to make sure that we were clear with everything that potentially might be requested of us down the road. And, and having it gated, the fire department has gated accesses all over the city. Right. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this issue? So what do you some of these oh, oh, okay. you go ahead. I'll just, uh, can I do that from here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Alan Sylvia, State Representative, 7th Bristol District. Um, obviously this is in my district and I had the opportunity to meet with uh, 
many of the residents who you see here from Evelyn's Way. I, and I walked the property yesterday. I remember when this came up a few years ago and it was denied by the zoning board. Uh, and I understand and I see the significant difference that would make it just justifiable, obviously, for this board to send this forward uh, to zoning. However, I just want to, for the record, say that as I walked that property yesterday and, and observed uh, where the water flows and the wetlands and the concerns that they had about their own drainage, uh, uh, you know, it was pretty clear that they didn't want anything built there. And I could understand why. Uh, and I just wanted to make, make that known. Obviously, we will, again, go before the zoning board um, uh, to discuss the uh, changes. I know those are significant changes, and I, I know some of these folks uh, could swallow that pill. Uh, but uh, I would like you to hear from them as well. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Yes, <coughs> state your name, please. My name is John Cavallo. I live at 99 Evans Way. I'm one of the bodies. Uh, I think I can speak for everybody here that the plan is good. We accept it. The only thing is, is there any touch, anybody's going to touch any waters there. We have wetlands right behind where they want to be building, and we have a big reserves tank, let's call it that, because <clears throat> the cul-de-sac has tanks under there. Mm -hmm. When they get full, it goes into that reserve tank, whatever you want to call it, and then it drains very slow into the wetlands, which it never makes it down there because it's so far off. It never really makes it down there, and that's what I don't want. So, because we are enough problems down there at the other end, that every year I have to call the, uh, the city, the water department, to go clean it up because you just can't live on that street with that smell. If, not, if they're not going to touch the waters at all, I think we're all fine with this as long as they walk to rest of the street. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, I miss? just have a question regarding the access. Your, yeah, your name, name, please. Oh, sorry. My name is Andrea Aguiar. I live at 46 Evelyn's Way. Yes. My question is, I can't see it from here, but where is the access through Evelyn's Way for the fire department? Sure. Sure. On sure. the bottom of Griffin? Or? No, do you want to come up? Yeah, sure. So here's Griffin Street now. Here's where the pavement ends. Okay. So for this development, for their driveway and all of their parking, this is their driveway. And in their parcel. In this location here, if the fire department wants access for, so if they're in here and they need to get here, <coughs> they will, will grant them an easement to be able to do this. <coughs> Same thing, if they need to get here and can't come in from Evelyn's Way, they'll now be able to come in from Griffin's and come in here, but there will be a gate here, either on this or at this end or at this end, wherever they would like it to be. And that's so, only through so site plan review if they access. require it. That's right. only if they require it. They may ask for it. They've asked for similar things like that in the past. And what is the plan for distinguishing the difference between Evelyn's Way and your development here? What well, this, is going, this will remain grass okay. all the way around this cul de sac. So this is the pavement right now. So we own here. We don't own this. This is this is actually Griffin. So this slope will stay exactly the way that it is now. This slope will stay the way that it is now. What there will be is some, well, potentially, so there's a catch basin right at the end of this mm -hmm. cul-de-sac now. Mm -hmm. There'll be some type of either gravel driveway or if they want it to be paved, usually graveled or some type of impervious surface they've allowed in the past. Or grass creek. With, with a gate there so that they can just get through with emergency vehicles. Mm -hmm. So what you see now along this stretch of uh, Griffin Street, this will remain grass, this will remain grass. Coming in off of Griffin, we've come off and we've come onto our site as quickly as possible to construct this driveway. And then there'll also be, from our driveway, additional green space on our own site, and then green space on the street as well. So they can walk through there. So people well, that are on this side can actually have access walking. Yes, So there's absolutely. no fence, there's no obstructions. No. And during site plan review, that may be something that gets asked for, but that's not what this board right now. That the fire department can only so the other traffic don't start going through it all the time. They usually gate it and put a lock on it, and only the fire department and the police department, all any emergency vehicle has the key for that. 
if they're going to do that, they might as well leave the whole section. My personal opinion. Well, it's that's eight. not for this board. Know, that's not for this board. It's a narrow discussion. That's a discussion that's for the. That's a discussion at the zoning board of appeals. That's what they do. Though. But that's just something I wanted to bring up. Yeah, but okay. and okay. it's a standard. That's what they do. Yeah, they make it that way. They do that. Okay. Thank you. Well, since I'm up here, I don't want to have to keep you if you don't mind. <laughs> Say your name for the record. Yes, Cheryl DeMora, 35 Evelyn's Way. I actually have photos that actually support what you're talking about and, and maybe to help you people see. So this. Oh, I know. Sorry. Yeah, you know the area. So this. this <laughs> he knows the yeah, poor guy. <laughs> this is actually Evelyn's. This is at the bottom of Evelyn's Way. Here's where he's talking about they're I going was, to come. I was there this morning. Oh, all right. And then. <laughs> This is what, you know, for the people who don't know, this is actually Griffin Street, which when you come up the top, that goes all the way up to the top. Yeah. So th what they're going to do is yeah. put that, and then it, it, there's already a street paved and everything, right. and then the next street over it looks like this, so they could actually come down South Beach, they can take a left, your residence from that area, and go on South Beach, and it goes all the way to, up to Arch. So they actually have not just one Griffin Street access, they can go down South Beach, take a right to Griffin, they can go down Griffin, and back to St. Lot, so there's a lot more. Yeah, you can keep those, yeah. I have to. Yeah, oh, okay. Them. Potential. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, you want to no, I only really need one for the oh. record. If you I hand me something, I can't give it back. If anyone else can show, but it does show <laughs> what he was talking <laughs> about. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, so, you know, a lot of people haven't seen that part. They just talk about that little piece. <laughs> on there so you know Just no but I do agree as long as it's not Evelyn's way then both parcels of properties can remain private which everyone's happy with they can all you know go ahead and live the only thing is it's not for this meeting but they'll have to pass other things along the way and that is something that is you know, in the future. Yes. Right now, we're just here. So it, it is different. We are happy with Griffin and that, that it is possible to do it through. So you made it possible because a lot of times you said it wasn't possible. So. That, well, that's the thing. That's, uh, that's, that's for, something that's for that, yeah. Review. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know, but I'm just, yeah. Yeah. if you yeah. live down there, you would know. Oh, yeah. right. yes. I lived down there all my life. Yeah. Oh, and I know. Yeah, so, we know. So okay. that we know. No, yeah. what that place is. Okay? The, and, and it also, your new plan also contributes to better safety, which I'm appreciative to that for children and the safety of the people. So, and then the fire department actually is like a bonus yeah. to have that feature. So, and you know it's going to be gated, hopefully. Yeah, yes. You know, which, you got to make sure that you got to well, show up for that, too. Yeah, you know okay, I mean? yeah, which, yeah. I I'm mean, they really you, should just be. Just show up yeah. and make sure. Yeah, yeah. We have enough problems with uh, people, people trying to uh, steal and all these other things that go on because of those woods back. So we, that would we actually right. be a, a better, yeah. He's done it right before gated areas. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Tim. So, um, Tim Machado. I live at 100 Evelyn Way. I know we've had discussion before. Uh, my purpose for home. So I thank John for letting me understand kind of what the pipeline and the drainage and all that looks like. Um, and I know this petition has been denied a few times. So now with the change with Griffin Street, I guess I'm just trying to understand the landscape a little bit better for that area, so I understand the property. But um, why was it never um, constructed that way from the beginning from Griffin Street? And it seemed like every petition just kind of seemed like it wanted to go through Evans way. And what kind of stopped it from maybe going to this plan? To begin um, with? You know, that, that's not really before us. Right. It, it's really the, the, what's before us is 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 this materially different. Right. So I, you know, it, development patterns. It's how private property owners wish to develop. Yeah, I thought maybe you might so, have an answer for that, and maybe what stopped that bug, or if they even it, that bug. It's not germane to the right. to the issue. Okay. Thank you. The only thing I can add to um, all of you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, basic, you know, our situation here in the planning board is to help, to help our safety, to help the fact that he would have come over in front of us with a plan that he won, he or the company would have constructed, and we will let go, we'll approve it without any. Um, for family value, children, like you mentioned, the street, the gate, so on and so forth. 
um, there will be different. But what is on the front of us today, as we mentioned in the previous, I see a big substantial change from the previous, that the previous whoever was one in the front of the zoning. So, and I see what I see from the previous, what I was understanding from the previous, if I was live in your area, I would have tried to accept this, rather accept the previous, but that's not my decision, that's not our decision. So, we want to make sure that each and every one of you are comfortable. If this should go in the front of zoning, just the place and maybe to bring it out. But on the front of us, if we do something, we would not do anything that would harm your area, the children, and so on. <coughs> so at this point, am I saying, uh, I don't know if there's any other question <coughs> with my colleague. Uh, we have one more. One. Yes. Mike Nattles, 55 Beverly White. Um, first thing I'd like to say is thank you for taking consideration to all voices for what we said. And this is, this is what we were looking for. This is. I mean, like John said, I think we all agree that this is a good proposal. Uh, my other question is, is the footprint here, is the footprint the same? Is it taking any more of the area? I mean, is it impeding on the wetlands here any more than the previous proposals? Which proposed the commercial proposal or? Uh, no, the last one. The, the last, last one, one we, we didn't go through the exercise of actually doing the grading and everything. Okay. Um, I can tell you that this is a drastic improvement from. Right, we can we can, can see that. With that. Yeah. This is what before the conservation commission, which you've all seen. This was the commercial development that's allowed by right. So you can see how close we were getting to this wetland right in the yeah. back of this. Right there. So right now, I mean, you just look at this difference and see how much green yeah. space is yeah. added. Yeah. So as far as the last petition. Building sizes are the same, yeah. two off-street parking spaces for each one, uh, same driveway rather than the connector here. Right. It was here, had to shift these a little bit because this elevation <coughs> difference from here to here is so great yeah. Yeah. that we had to make this in a way that, that we can get down that hill. Okay. Okay. You said this is just, just in case there is required by the right. fire department. If, if required by the fire department, there'll be some type of connector access for emergency purposes. Thank you. <coughs> Um, okay. And do I have a motion? I have a motion to approve the lot G27-1. You were headed to petition. Correct. Yes. And that you find that it, you need to make a finding, you need to make a finding that it is materially different from the application that was. substantial difference from the previous. From the one that was denied by the Board of Appeals. Thank you. Don't mind me, my hearing went at the battery. <laughs> <laughs> and you second it? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 It passes. Yes. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, there. Item number two. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Item number two is an application for endorsement of plan subdivision oh, approval the required form. Oh, I'll be there tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no. Say that? He just wants to be on TV. He doesn't want you to get all the attention. He wants some TV time. Okay, owner applicant on this is RGK Realty Trust, location 386 Kilburn Street and Dwelly Street, Assessor's Lot 17-1. This is, uh, for the record, uh, Bill Roth, Planning Director. I'm going to read the uh, notice since it, this is a public hearing item. Request was submitted by SciTech Inc. on behalf of RGK Realty Trust for a proposed 14 lot subdivision. The proposed lot sizes are between 4,000 plus or minus square feet to 9,518 square feet. The applicant proposes seven wa waivers to the subdivision regulations. Section 3. 
107, the required cost estimate. Number 2, 3.109, the required schedule of construction activities. Number 3, 3.110, to uh, the required environmental impact evaluation. 4, section 6.105, the required 25 foot radius at the intersections. 5, section 6.200, the required 50 foot right of way width. 6, section 6.200, the required 26 foot travel way width, and seven, section 6.211D, the requirement of underground utilities, zoning is commercial mill district. Good evening, for the record again, Dan Aguiar of SciTech Engineering, here this evening on behalf of the applicant, RGK Realty Trust. Uh, I'm sure you're all somewhat familiar with this project. And you'll see on the drawing that I have um, posted up on the easel right now, uh, is an aerial photo of what is the King Philip Mill complex. Now this King Philip Mill complex extends uh, easterly off of Kilburn Street, southerly off of uh, Dwelly Street. As you can see there, the, uh, the two main buildings of the complex. What we're here this evening for is to discuss just what you see inside the bold yellow area. That would be the area that is comprised of this subdivision. Previously, you endorsed an approval not required plan for the lots that have legal frontage along Kilburn and along Dwelling. So that would be these lots. You can see them in your, in your, uh, yeah. your plans. This stretch, those lots have already been cut out and approved. Mm -hmm. This stretch, these lots have been cut out and approved. This building is entirely gone. This one is almost gone. Yeah. But you can see now what this is comprised of. This mill building, uh, as you can see here, this is the, the dividing part. That mill building is, is to stay remaining uh, for the time being. Uh, we appeared before the Zoning Board of Appeals and requested a variance in what is this commercial mill district and the King Philip Mill overlay district to allow us to create what you see on this plan today. It's been a couple of steps to get there. The first step was to take out the approval not required lots that were shown on the ex initial variance plan. We had demolition permits to obtain, uh, stop that construction work, conservation permits to get for the demolition. All that's been ongoing. So now we're at the point where, okay, we're almost ready to put a shovel on the ground to stop building this subdivision road the, exactly how it was presented on the, on the Zoning Board of Appeals petition. Part of that petition requested lots of this size down to 4,000 square feet with building setbacks that were in, uh, in the variance decision. And you'll see in our table, um, I've put in what the area and the setback approvals per the variance were, which was 50 feet of frontage, 4,000 square feet, 18 foot front yards, six foot side yards, and 10 foot rear yards. So that's the, that's the size lot that we're dealing with. Not that you're not permitting single family house construction. What you're reviewing and looking at is the subdivision itself, the roadway construction, drainage, things of that nature. So again, what you see shaded in that, that dark yellow is the parcel of real estate that we're dealing with here. Just to give you another, to help you take another look at it, this is a blown up area, again, just of, this would be the shape that we just saw in yellow on the aerial. Pink is the location of the existing mill buildings that currently sit there now. So you can see in, in the shape that we're dealing with, how much of it is consumed by those buildings. And then the last sheet that I have up for presentation purposes in there, this is the proposed subdivision itself. So you can see we don't have this mass of yellow mill building anymore. Um, we would have an entrance in off of Kilburn Street here, an entrance in off of Kilburn Street here. This roadway would come down, just like city streets and blocks are square at the corners. I, I've done a number of subdivisions in the city where we're in the middle of this urban area and we try and put in a subdivision that's got curvy roads and cul-de-sacs but that's not really what the city is especially this portion of the city and the density that surrounds it so we, what we wanted to do was keep a block style configuration so that it would be in keeping with the surrounding area what we did do was we added in this cul-de-sac and this green space in the middle basically to give someone a little bit of a different traveled way once they got inside here and when you're living in here it'll give you a little bit more of a residential feel than a city feel. So that, that cul-de-sac and the landscaping proposed on the inside of that will, 
will help us do that. Part of this project from the beginning was to increase uh, the environmental benefit of this entire area with its proximity to Cook Pond, which is directly to our east. Part of that and the decisions that we made back during the Zoning Board of Appeals process was to get rid of all of the impervious cover building and pavement and everything that's out there now and contamination and everything that, that runs down. And the owner, Mr. Kafori, can, can attest to the money that he spent cleaning up this site. But the cleanup isn't really before you, but I want you to understand the endeavor that he took on with trying to get to this end product with what he's had to endure just to get there. So the monies that have been spent and still being spent are astronomical. So when we went back, when we went in and did this initial design, we had to keep the intensity and the density high enough to make it profitable to do all that demolition work. So it's a balancing act. Um, I had told Mr. Kafori back then that I would not have taken on this project if I were him. He didn't listen to me then. So now, he, he may have now, yes, but, yes. We're, but where we're at now, we, we, we have to complete it. And, and Bob's the kind of guy is he will complete this project and he'll keep banging away at it until he gets it done. So when we were doing the design, we had to keep the lots to a size that would allow us a, a greater density while still giving someone a reasonable size piece of land to build a reasonable size single family home. Also in that development was let's keep the pavement to a minimum. Let's keep the pavement down to about as narrow as, as we can get, provide off street parking, um, put as little into the cost of constructing this thing, again as a balancing act, to allow the whole project to be successful. If we were to come in here and build a subdivision that meets every single speck of the requirements of the planning board, Mr. Cafori could never have taken this on and would never be able to complete it. So basically all the waivers that we've requested, I'll be honest with you, it's an attempt to minimize the developer's costs while still providing a quality development for people to have single family homes in this, in this area that has been consumed by mill buildings and pavement. So there are a number of waivers that I'm sure we'll discuss uh, further in depth later on, but I'll, I'll give you quickly what we've, what we've proposed. This site currently now, as you saw in the aerial, basically runs entirely into Cook Pond, basically untreated. So it picks up everything off the pavement, off of the buildings, and just runs downhill into Cook Pond. If taking all of that out of there, you can see the amount of green space, lawn, and landscaping that we're, we're able to create reasonable size homes. This home that you see here, just so you get an idea of the size of it, Mr. Kafori and I did a project over on Brayton Avenue where the Brayton Avenue school was. And he built six, six, eight, six single family homes in that location, which the design is incredible of those homes. And so what you see there for the style of home, the proximity to each other, that's what this home, these homes will be driven towards that direction of size and spacing. So now, what we'll do is we're going to be constructing this entire subdivision road. We'll be installing sewer within the paved portion of the road. Sewer, because of elevation difference, it's easier to connect to the sewer, existing sewer in Dwelly Street, than it is to go uphill and get to Kilburn Street. So as it is right now, we have to, when you take these buildings out of there and the basements and everything else, that's a big hole. So we've already, we're filling in seven or eight feet of that but to get sewer to get out to here, we'd have to raise it even higher or have to burden each of these homes with an individual pump and pump up yeah. to Kilburn Street, which is never the best option. Oh. So, so we chose the direction of tying into sewer through gravity. And again, we control these lots along dwelling, provide an easement, tie into a manhole right out here in the middle of dwelling. And that's at an elevation low enough that we can make this work. Drainage, drainage will now run down this paved portion, down this paved portion to a low spot right here. We have a set of double catch basins proposed and a drain manhole, another catch basin here into this drain manhole, and then that will be piped into this riprap area with a level spreader that will now take storm water, treat it, and then now allow it to continue on the way that it would into Cook Pond. So the volume of storm water and the intensity has drastically been reduced just by the sheer cover difference that we're not dealing with impervious surface, we're dealing with grass surfaces. Um, so the drainage that hits Cook Pond will be drastically improved from what's out at the site now. And when you look at this as what we call a redevelopment project, um, there are certain requirements that we need to be, get as close to 
meet as we can, and we'll deal with this portion of it with the Conservation Commission once we get past, hopefully, uh, the planning board process. So this uh, petition before you is to construct 14 residential building lots and the subdivision roadway associated with it. That's generally the proposal. Uh, there are a lot of I's and T's and stuff to dot. Um, we have not received a, a formal review yet from any city department, so we do have to get those in, process those, and make whatever changes we feel reasonable, uh, and then get those plans back to you as well. So if you have any specific questions, I'd be more than glad to answer them at this time, or if the audience has any. No, the building, that building is going to stay partially up. Uh, let's go back. Yeah, yeah, that's confusing me a little yeah. bit. Well, what happens is, on the initial plan, and you can see it on... Okay, so if you look at sheet number two, that's the actual, that's the plan that actually creates the lots. So this mill building is going to remain in place. But isn't that all right now? now like, isn't that like... This is the building. This is the building. That ripped up. Right. This building, no. That no, building has not been touched. Oh, I know. Yeah, no. yeah. Okay, so there's a. Okay. There's, like, there's, there's, there's that little yeah. connecting piece. Yeah. Yeah. Little connecting yeah, I know. Pieces. I forgot. It. Thanks, Thanks, That's the same. And in the zoning board of appeals process, we had a discussion. Um, some type of mixed use to take place there. Some retail, maybe some apartments. But we'll deal with that animal next. You know, one step at a time, one piece of the pie at a time. Um, but I'm sure Mr. Kafori will move forward with that portion of the project once this portion gets completed. How close is the edge of the right of way to the physical building? The exact location of where that where that building can be cut has not been determined. We've got a little bit of room to play with, but through the Zoning Board of Appeals process, we basically, we showed this is where the line is going to be. That's where the building has to be. So we're going to have to make sure that it's pulled back at you know at least to the property line. Questions? Just a question that I looked on this. Lot 10, 9, and 8. You want that one? Like the ones on the water? Do you want? <laughs> uh, I'll take the one in triangle. Lot 7. Lot 7? Seven. Lot seven's the best lot in the subdivision. You're right. Yeah, yeah. But go ahead. What's your question? So the entrance for these lots also get buildable. And they came from uh, Princeton Street right here. In other words, no other street. Yeah. There, there, there are no other streets. So what you'll see here is this is what the road would look like. And if you can. So just for presentation purposes, I put houses and some driveways and some vehicles on there. So these are the lots that you're talking about. Okay. So all, everyone's driveways will be off of Princeton Street. Their homes as well. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. Utility? Utility on the ground? We, we, no, we're, we're asking for a waiver to allow above ground utilities, which I think probably 99% of the subdivisions constructed um, in Fall River are above ground. Most recently, the one we did up at Highland Farms, remember the old St. Vincent's? That was lot, that those were larger lots, sidewalks, full width of roads. Um, but right now, uh, we have above ground utilities on the existing streets. Um, so the applicant, again, one, to, 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 to try and save some costs. Two, because we're trying to minimize our footprints, we have asked for a waiver of narrower streets, narrower pavements. So throwing an additional utility in the ground makes things even tighter. We're gonna have sewer, water, gas. Um, so now to throw electric telephone and cable underground makes it rather tight. I was gonna say, a lot of stones there also. Yeah. There's a lot of stones everywhere, especially this side. There's a lot of everything. There's a lot of everything. Oh, some beautiful granite. But they're, they're, they're going to repurpose most of it. Not Bob, but the, the demolition company is, uh, is is doing a neat job and, uh, yeah, and good job. getting rid of stuff. It's taking a little bit longer than what everyone thought, but it'll be a, it'll be a nice project to get it completed. Is that what you guys want? <laughs> That's that that's a battle. That's a different battle for another day. Uh, <laughs> no, I got nothing to do. I'm just asking. I remember it was a big thing. 
Okay. Any other questions from the board on this issue right now? And, and Jim, there. Yes, uh, your name, please. Uh, Jim Souza, uh, 300 Second Street, Fall River. I'm also the chairman of the Community Preservation Committee. I just have a question about the lots that abut the <coughs> pond. Is there any land access that, like city owned land access, that the possibility of in the future, five, 20 years from now, that there could be a you know, uh, walking path around the pond? Or does the, does the owner of the lots close to the pond own the land? right to the water's that, edge. That's correct. The, so the owners of these homes, there's, basically, there's actually a retaining wall that comes right along this front now. So they would own basically to the pond. There is a, a parcel here that the city owns um, and then the, the pond. So we've had this discussion through the Zoning Board of Appeals process that there could potentially be some access if the city wanted to from Dwelly Street. But to create but the subdivision itself, no, there would be, right now there is nothing in place. Uh, and there's no possible way to do that. that. There's no possibility to do that. Not without diminishing the value of these lots as well. And in a situation where every dollar counts on a project like this, we have to look at the grand picture of look what we just took out of here. And we have to do whatever we can to support I think the getting that out of here. I think the development's great, but I also think that a, a, the possibility of a pathway around Cook Pond, which is enormous, would be a great asset to these people who live there as well as that neighborhood in general. Um, and I think it puts a kibosh to the thought of ever having that recreational facility in the city. I mean, we look at recreational facilities that have been recently um, uh, developed, the, the Quickish and Rail Trail, heavily used, yep. um, Bicentennial Park, the boardwalk, they heavily used. We just passed, uh, the CPC several years ago just passed a feasibility study to do and the development of a bike path along uh, the Taunton River um, from from the battleship all the way to Tibbet and I just think this would be another really good recreational facility if that little bit of land could be acquired or or utilized to have you know I, I think it's a we're missing an opportunity here for the future that's 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 why I'm here just just to, I think the development's fine the, all of that but I would I would just ask that they reconsider that possibility. That's what I'm here for. Dan, can you mention the area we'll give it to the South Side, that area? Can you mention that? Yeah. Okay. I, I certainly am. Yeah. Right, well, so we no, haven't talked about this yet. So. Going back, you see it on a larger scale of the plans. There was a parcel um, of land, and this was back in the Zoning Board of Appeals process. You'll see there's a parcel B17. It's called, you know, ANR1, um, down at the corner of Dwelly Street with the area of the gate and the pavement, uh, at that time, Mr. Kafori agreed to granting that to the city. But he's called that half, right? Yes, yes exactly. exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's so we give it that, we give it the other side also here, yeah. from this side on the west. Excuse me, can I say something? I don't want nobody walking in my backyard I, that right. I don't know. Right. You know what I mean? This man spent a lot of money. I can. And you know, and uh, there's, there's plenty of room where you said, right through uh, King Philip yep. Street, and they can go right around the pond, but mm -hmm. they ain't gonna go by the military thing either. Right. And why not back there either? Right. So I can see a point. During the land transfer, I do want to know because I was, I just started. <laughs> it was like your first week, I remember. <laughs> it was probably one of my first week or two during the the, the land transfer. There was discussion back and forth that I had seen plans regarding a pathway through there. Um, for whatever reason, um, the determination was made at that time when the land transfer that a right-of-way or an area was not reserved. Right. So that was a decision that was made with the land transfer. Correct. And, um, and again... And not I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say you know, one way or the other. Right. That is just, unfortunately, you know, to your point, that was a decision that was made. There, there was discussions back and forth. Sure. We were going, there were different drawings yep. about different things, and the ultimate transfer did not include that. Just so that was a discussion that was made during the transfer. I would just like to interject one thing, though. I am an avid biker. I travel the East Lake uh, Bay bike path in Bristol. It goes, travels from Bristol to Providence. You'll go by everybody's backyard, that entire 
that entire ride, as well as the one down the Cape. So that misnomer about people don't want things in their backyard, it's kind of a little crazy to me, but I understand that this is something that's already been done. I think it's a shame. I think that we, we, it's a missed opportunity for our future. I mean, we look at the Quickish Animal River, how it was buried under the ground. Now we all want to bring it back out. I mean, mistakes happen, and they can never be reversed. That's all I'm saying, but what's done is done, but that's all I'm here to say. So as far as my review, um, I, you can see this is my copy. I have red marks all over it. I've done an initial review. Community Utilities has done a review. We're waiting for engineering. Um, my recommendation. Uh, Can I speak up as well? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to make a recommendation. I have a chance. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I, I just saw, again, Alan, so your state representative. Yes, I've you been, I've been, uh, I've been waiting to come here to, to do this tonight. Obviously, the the, the uh, other issue was something that happened last night, and uh, but this has been one that has been in the making for several years. You all know how important this project is to us in the South End. Uh, and we've been fought by every group, yeah. every agency, every angle. And it wasn't for Mr. Kafari, those mills would still be there and would be a fire trap to those people who live there. You know, uh, Mr. Souza mentions, you know, uh, a missed opportunity. The missed opportunity would be not getting this project done uh, and having a fire there. And, and, and we were giving people instructions to keep a, a, a to-go bag at the door with their life insurance and birth certificates in it because that's how serious that would have been if there had been a fire. It is a relief for the people in the South End now that this 90% uh, of this building is down. And at the same time, because I do support preservation, and while all of this came on, we still are preserving a mill building. Before we saving that building, could have knocked that down. He's doing everything he possibly can to save that chimney, that smoke that. And that's an important I, issue. No, I'm, not, I'm not just okay, saying the question. He is trying. No, he is trying to do that. And, great, and he gave the city right. this huge piece of land, which is going to be green. We have no green space in the south end of Fall River. This is going to give us access to Cook Pond yes. for the first time in over 100 years. People will be able to see Cook Pond. And you know, I even recently tried to get some trees knocked down, and they fought me with that too. Right. So there's always a constant battle to get something done to improve the city. Whatever reason why they do this, whether it's political in some ways, or, but we've been fought every step of the way. This is five years in the making. We want to get this job done. And every, it seems there's always a roadblock. Let to prove this, let to prove that. We want to move forward to get this project done. This is, the, when we think of uh, an apartment complex, we're in a housing crisis right, right now in Massachusetts. If we can have more apartments in that, in that area, when we have green space, we pr we're preserving property, these additional single family homes what a beautification for our city. What an increase to our tax base. Every, everything. All the things you would ask for. So I, I am here to support tonight uh, for this moving forward. And uh, thank you for, I know I rant a little bit. But I, get, I get so excited about this project and that I always see a roadblock, a roadblock all, all the way. You know, when, when we talk, we, we did not, you know, for many years, as I said, we talked about this area. We talked about a bike path. Seven years. We talked about a bike path. Residents didn't want it. People from the governments all the way down did not want a bike path. On the other side, same issue. Because I had talked to the general from the National Guard about using a wet. Didn't want, they didn't want to do that. And the residents on that side, beyond the electric company, they didn't want it there. So we were already seeing resistance. Then when we looked at security issues, we looked at cameras, we looked at, at uh, lighting. So it became a, a serious problem uh, with regard to, now will there ever be a partial way, possibly on the other side or from some other angle, but this in itself, opening green space to Kupan will be an incredible, uh, an incredible improvement to the uh, people in the South End and the entire city, because they'll utilize that space as well. This is gonna change the face uh, of the South End. So important to it. Thank you very much. Great job. I'm, I'm in support of this project totally. I'm Thank in support you. of Bob Kafari. He's done a great job. I agree that this is going to change, transform this area. I'm not here to create a fight or be a pro, uh, 
the uh, protagonist against this project. Um, one thing I hear as a CP as a CPC chairman a lot of the time is that we fund everything in the north end of the city. We fund everything in the downtown. We don't do anything for the south end. So here I am just advocating sure, for the sure. south end, but I don't want to hear from residents that we don't do anything for the south end and we don't care about the south end because we care about the whole city and we try and spread the wealth of awesome. CPC through our city. That's all I'm saying. So I just want to add, we'll be working with you on the building that's standing. Mm -hmm. Somehow we'll find a way, whether it's a I chimney or a I building. Think a good job. Thank you so much. And I just want to add to the board, I really appreciate everything that's happening here. Uh, I met many, many times with the South End resident. The only reason why I'm here is because of them. This project is for is going to change the South End forever, as you know. And I, I listened and I heard everything that they had to say and mention at the meetings. One of them, they wanted badly access to the pond which we were able to provide. Right here in this area, it's almost maybe about three quarters of an acre, half an acre. It'll gain access to everyone, not just the people living here, to the pond. Um, but we're talking kayaking, we're talking uh, swimming. In, you know, people say, yes. well, that pond, that pond is clean. Uh, there's, there's, there's fish in there. We had yes. folks come down from Boston to test the water. We had, it's been stocked. They're looking at a possible fishing tournament in the near future. So all of this about the you know it's, it's polluted. It may have been polluted 80 years ago when we used to swim there, Chucky, <laughs> and I used to get beaten for it. But it's not now because the water continues to spring through and and clean its way out or right down there under by Bill Bells and out down to, down to the water. But this is a this is an improved a much improved pond and it's going to be beautiful for the people. If you were blindfolded and you were brought to the cusp pier on the other side and, and you were taking that blindfold off and asked where you were, you'd say, I'm in New Hampshire or I'm in Maine. Yeah. That's how pretty that pond is. Yeah. So it's going to make a huge difference to when you stand there. Well, I stand in front of you tonight seeking the board uh, approval for this subdivision. The money that I stand there is very significant. When the city went out for, to bid this for demolition, the price was $5 million. And of course, other things to it, you know, added to that. So every day I wait here, basically, is a loss of time. We are right now in a real estate somehow boom, so I'd like to proceed with this. So I'm seeking the board's approval. And obviously, on the other details, Mr. Dan Aguiar will work with the board as far as sewer line, water line, stuff like that. This is already approved by the zoning board. We haven't changed anything. All I need is to just move forward. I had many obstacles during demolition, and uh, obviously, we just continue to move forward. Can I add something what you achieve and uh, what that building besides, see that's a beauty that's coming up. Also safety for the city. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, children safety and issue. And for their neighbors right there, Thank because you. I went by that building more than once. I attended like eight uh, neighborhood meetings at the South End. This is the wish of the people that live around the building. This is all their wishes. They wanted to see this turn into single family homes and preserve one of the buildings. That was one of their conditions before I even got involved. And this is done for my legacy, basically. Um, obviously, I'd like to make some money. I don't know how much money I would make, but that's the whole objective. But I'm proud of what I do, and it will be accomplished. It will be done in, in a per in Excellent. perfect Excellent. way. So now. And, and, and just for the record, I want to make note that uh, Representative Sylvia has sent a letter of support to the planning board, and it will be put on file. Um, started doing the detailed review because obviously the, the the plans that are approved have to have the you know the drainage and grading and all of that because that's a responsibility of the planning board. Uh, we've gotten some of the, um, not the full engineering review done, and uh, a lot of the water and sewer review has been done. Um, there are um, some questions, and I have spoken with Dan about some of them. Um, it's more of a nuts and bolts. Um, I'm recommending that, you know, that the, uh, the hearing was open. You got to see everything. Um, we would need to look at continuing this so that we can meet with the engineer to finalize the uh, utilities and engineering um, 
and then uh, come back with a recommendation and in whatever revisions that are needed that the board can then approve. So, um, you know, okay. and on the whole, I'm very supportive. The, the layout, the design, um, it's almost exactly what was shown in front of the Board of Appeals. But unfortunately, there are some nuts and bolts and details regarding the grading, drainage, uh, and the design and layout that need to be finalized that the board will ultimately have to approve. Uh, do you have a time frame on that? Um, what's, what's the time frame that we can... I, I would like... It, and I know you, you schedule meetings upon yeah. when you need we, them. We need to schedule this to a date, sir. Right. I, um, would, I would request that you maybe get a meeting in, in two weeks, if you can accommodate that. And that will give us time over the next week that I can sit with, with the planner and everybody else in the city, get their comments, make whatever changes, have a revised set of plans back in for when we appear to you, um, hopefully with a clean bill of health. From the planner and the uh, different departments. Yeah, can I can I say something, please? Yes. What 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 will change in two weeks as far as your plan is concerned? There I, I don't know because I've got I've got no review. There are things. The, I know. It understand. cannot be approved tonight, Mr. Fori. I'm an engineer myself. So, so um, uh, the I just want to ask my engineer. There's put them on record. What what could change? Uh, the way pavement width could change. Well, in in my opinion, yes. if all the waivers were granted, yes. It's, I feel that the plan is complete. Okay. However, those... So, therefore, I'm asking the board's approval for this plan, if, if you don't mind. The rest of the details we can work out. Like I just mentioned, time is money. Uh, time is essential. Community Utilities is requesting, I know that I've just gotten their review, they're requesting that the minimum easement size is 20 feet. So you have to have that discussion you know, and that has to be shown on the plan. Right. That, uh, there are certain things. Um, I was hoping for a month, but if you want to continue it to, um, well, the, the. Well, two weeks is the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing from tonight, so we can't do it on I, that I, Thursday. And I, and I actually have three hearings that week. Yep. So we could look at, I would prefer looking at continuing it to the week of the 23rd. That would give us enough time to meet next week go over everything and get some revisions back. Could, could we ask that the board act on the waivers? Yeah. Just I, so I'm, that I'm recommending that, that that's a dis I, that I'm that recommending that it be continued sorry. and that they can act on everything. Dan, can I ask a question? Right, but, but we need to know whether or not they'll entertain these waivers yes. to know whether or not so the, what we're moving forward with is okay with them. You know, the engineering department and the fire department are concerned with a 22-foot roadway width. So that's a discussion that we need to have. Uh, Dan, can I ask you a question? You don't, you, you don't have to ask me questions. But that's what I'm asking, too. When did you officially submit the plans? A month ago? Two months ago? I know. You have the date when it was stamped in. It's probably had one month to review. Yeah, and, and we are extremely busy, and we are limited I, I, staff, and, and we are doing the best we can. I understand. Uh, the 5th of August. Four months. So. Almost a month. And, and we are... Well, I understand. Yeah. I, I, I'm spending a lot of money. I, I, I understand, and, and I so I'm recommending... This, project, this is a massive project. That's not a joke. I'm just letting you know for the record. I know. And, and that's all. So I bottom know. line here, I want to ask the board to act on the waivers. Okay, so I'm asking them for a vote on the waivers. I, I think that it's premature. I think that they need to look at it in its totality. I disagree. If you want the pavement width to be white, I'll make I'll make it now white. It's no problem with me. You will be the one that look at this. I I I think it's so, premature. I don't think so. I mean, could the, 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 the and I under, and I understand Mr. Kafori's concerns. And if it were me, I mean, and, and this is what I'll offer, but I want you to think about this. The board could vote to move this project based upon the conditions set by the review departments. So if the review department asks for something. I don't like doing it that well, way. Well, no, I don't either, because then I'm, I I'm have opposed, to give what I'm the. I'm opposed to that. Yeah. I, I, let's do it, and let's do it right. Gives us the time next week to go over everything with you. And. They can come back on the week of the 23rd and deal, and we can have revised plans and do it. 
and do it right and be signed and done. Why wouldn't you let us let the board act on the waivers? That's a simple question. Is there something to hide? What's the problem? You want 24 weeks? Feet wide? Fine. What is that that you want? I, I think I'm that's a discussion with engineering and, and, and the fire department. What's the standard width in a subdivision like this? Yeah. 26. 26. 26, let it be. It's no problem. I don't need the waiver. I want to act on other waivers, which is the fiber. I, I have mean, no this issue project, with this need, cost honestly, estimate. Though, I to I'm going to let you, Mr. Gore. I have no issue. I, 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 I don't see how they can vote on partial of it and then come back. I, I, I don't know what voting on the waivers does. We can, we can, you can go over each waiver one at a time. I mean, the waivers are nothing. One is estimate. There's nothing to do. There's, there's nothing. But what's the waivers to have, What are they? As, as the planner yeah. read initially in his initial report, the first waiver is to waive the required cost estimate. Cost estimate. Is and, I have no, and I have no objection to that. Yeah. I have no objection to the schedule of activities. Okay. I have no objection to All the right, environmental yeah. impact one. Okay. Um, Pavement, we can, the 25-foot radius, I, I would like engineering to weigh in on. I think that's probably reasonable due to the tight nature. Um, the 40-foot right-of-way is what was shown, and for this size is fine. Um, the pavement width is of concern, and I think the underground utilities are of concern. Those are the only two. The, those are those are the two that are of concern. No problem. So I want to discuss the underground utilities. Like we mentioned before, in a project like this, I'm a builder and a developer. When you do a lot like this, and you have a sewer line and water line, and a gas line going into this house, and all of a sudden you intercept and it was three other lines underground, it makes the project very undoable. That's what. The entire neighborhood, the whole south end is overhead electric. Why would be my subdivision go underground? No other subdivision in town went underground except for one, Highland Farm, to go on the record. So I'm no different than any other place. Obviously, we have to make sense of the, you know, the cost. <coughs> so that's why I'm asking the board at least a direction. How we're going <coughs> to proceed, you know. Anyway, so I'll let you guys decide. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? You can give them a direction on, on your house. On. I personally, when you do, like to say, the right thing to be built in the city. But it's, uh, if, but if we request it as could be possible, you have to tell us you're in the Well, the, un the underground is possible. The underground or not undergrounding, that is a decision of this board at such time and yeah and that, that's clearly a decision um, that is not a health safety welfare issue that's more of an aesthetic issue uh, that I think that if you wanted to let them know how you're leaning towards that that's fine um, so I, I heard the applicant say that he didn't mind going 26 feet so that that waiver might be off the table I don't know well as a, as a negotiation, if the board wanted to, to, to grant the waivers, we would take that one off and add the additional two feet of pavement, sorry, four feet of pavement, because we're at 22 right now. So that width would answer any concerns of the fire department. And that additional cost, again, it's an additional cost. However, with it being allowed to put the utilities above ground, we'd be able to write off some of that money by allowing the electricity to go above head. So other than that, I don't think the planner had any concerns with any of the other waivers. There are technical details from engineering, sewer, that that kind of stuff needs to be walk, worked out, but that really has nothing to do with the waiver requests. So, but I, I don't think you need to vote on it. You can tell them your general feeling towards it that, you know, if, if he gave, you know, as Dan stated, if he gave you the, the wider width road, you'd be more inclined to, to allow the utilities above ground. Yeah. And, and you can just do that as a poll, I guess. You don't have to vote. As a non-binding. Just so that we have some, a direction to move. Sure. So when we go meet with engineering, fire, and everything else, we'll have a structure to deal with. So I won't be discussing with them, well, what's the pavement width going to be? 
we've agreed that it's going to be 26. We'll increase it from the 22. There won't be a discussion of whether or not the utility should be above ground or underground. That's already been determined. We're not asking for any other waivers. Direction of the board. Right, with the direction. So yeah, on, that, on that pavement, which, if you own the subdivision, which width you, would you go by? 22, 24, 26, what, what do you think is good? Because you're the engineer. Well, uh, I, I think the wider width because okay, no it, it, because if you allow, one of the sub one of the uh, div problems we had yeah. in the, another subdivision in the project that just before this one, it was a narrower street, and they talk about the lack of parking and the yeah. problems they've had. Yeah, and you know, so in your opinion, it always comes. In your opinion, twenty six would be good. Uh, twenty six would be better. better. Yeah, okay, great. That's what the requirement. Is fine. Let it be. So, what is the? Um, I would think that the direction I would like in discussing with them is, is the board more inclined if they went with the wider pavement for health, for safety issues, is the undergrounding as important? That's the direction I would like to know as a kind of an informal poll that I can then go back so we can finish this project. I am full satisfied the way with the underground mm -hmm. utility. With the so wider well. pavement? Yes. Yeah, me too. Because okay. in I'm a general fine. area, you know, half the city is because it's above uh, ground. All right. South End's got uh, poles. So everywhere, yeah. yeah. So no, nobody's got okay. no tips. Okay. That, that's, I have, I have that general direction, so um, okay. I think it's, I recommend that it be continued so that we can finish this and then come back with a revised set and a set of conditions that are appropriate. Um, so, so what date are you thinking? Um, th that two exactly. weeks, I, there's, I have public hearings no, every no, night. I, no, I agree. So maybe the beginning of that following week, uh, which I think is what you were thinking. Um, Thursdays are tough. What about, what about the, um, is everyone available Tuesday the 24th or Tuesdays? Tuesday the How about you, Chuck? Yeah, I'll make sure I make it. Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't know which which one is yeah, I know you have to I'm fine with both of them. So both are good for me. Yeah. September twenty-fourth. We we'll make them come one more time. I really appreciate that, by the way. For this evening. Is everyone is that good? Are I'm you good. Fine with I'm not very much fine. So Mr. Oh, well, Ross, Mr. Mr. Ross. <laughs> so we're going to do it on the 24th? Sure. Mr. Ross, so it's not possible for you guys to vote and approve the subject. The way no. I mean to have it. No. In your opinion. No. It is my opinion it is okay. not okay. possible All because right. you're showing, you're showing okay. 15 foot. Um, there are, the there are we'll some storm the drainage issues. Yes, but once this is approved under the state law, this is what gets approved. So that's why it has to be revised. Dan, can we approve those conditions? No, no, you can't. No, you well, can't for the, in my opinion, you could approve it with conditions. However, I mean, no, but listen, Mark. it's messy yeah. and it's problematic. Wait, you approve something with conditions. Yes. Okay. The condition, if the condition would be like I stated, for them to approve it, contingent upon sure. public utilities, fire, everybody else saying it's okay. You have no idea what they're going to no ask So in your opinion, what we're doing is good now. We'll go to the 24th, correct? Yes. You I have, have certainty. Okay, fine. I have to rely on my professor. You have certainty. Okay. You want certainty, don't you? Yeah, of course. Okay, Cer but this I is just certainty. I want to say I struggle a lot with this project, as you know, guys. So. I mean, I, I mean no, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. not looking for sympathy. I just want to move forward. So That's we'll the continue it to the really 24th and 5th. 5th journey. That'll be great. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the way, let me understand that. Where we really on the ground that they have the situation? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and the money can be better spent with the extra width and pavement. Uh, I mean, I agree. Agree. Make a motion to wave the under. No, 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 no. Continue. Continue. I'm sorry. Table it to the next meeting. Table for the next meeting. To the 24th. I'll make a motion that uh, the application for um, the asset lot B17-1 uh, be uh, continued till uh, Tuesday. August 24th at 5.30. September. September. September, I'm sorry. At 5.30. I'm thinking August. Summer's over. September, oh yeah. September 5th. Summer. Um, sorry about that. Thank you so much. Do I have a second? A second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Aye. Aye. Aye.
What's next on the agenda? Thank you so much, guys. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Somebody has to argue with each other. We have one more thing to go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Item you. number three. three. Application for a job that plan believed not to require approval from the plan. File number 19-1444, owner applicant Carlos A. Abdid Cam Cover. That might be incorrect. But location, Frederick and Bronson Street. How do you say it? Oh, okay. Assess the slot C-15-7 and 10. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairperson. The uh, Form A, their um, altering the frontage along Frederick Street to provide the required 80 feet of frontage for lot C-15-7, uh, lot C-15-10 uh, uh, will have 75 feet of frontage on Frederick and 176 feet of frontage on Bronson. Uh, it meets the frontage requirement on Bronson uh, and the area requirements, so therefore I'm recommending you endorse the format. Motion to endorse for me. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have the approval of the minutes of July 31st, 2019. I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, okay. okay. July 19th. Mm -hmm. I think, um, oh, yeah. July 19th. Make a motion to July 31st. Mm -hmm. July 31st. Yeah. July 31st. Yeah. 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 July 31st. Yeah. Okay. They said July 31st, when I did. Yeah, July 31st. Somebody needs, two made the motion at the same time. Only oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. No, no, go ahead, I'm all set. No. No, you go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> go ahead, boy. No. I'll make the motion. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do I have a second? I second that. <laughs> Sam Mario's okay. EMA went up. Uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, public. Sorry? There is no one here for public input, and so motion to adjourn. Did you make a motion to adjourn? I can't make a motion. May, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.